Today I'm going to show you how I made this outline marker. First, I start with a pen. Usually I, when I create a custom brush, I just take something that's already there and I duplicate it. So we'll take this Millie pen and go here where that's, uh, oh, it's cut off by my screen recorder, but create copy of current selected subtool. And we will name it, okay, I have that one selected. Subtool details. If you're not sure where to get this screen right here, it's in your tool properties. It's this wrench. If you can't find tool properties, it's usually in window, tool, tool property. First, I'm going to adjust this pen because I copied it. So it's going to have settings from before. Uh, let me see. I like to have a little bit of pressure sensitivity for even markers, because if you have a, a felt tip or heck even a Sharpie, if you draw a line, you push hard and release it, you go fast or slow, the line still has some variation. Not as much variation as say a brush or a crow quill, but still there is a little bit. So first I'm gonna turn off the velocity and I'm gonna put this up like that. Now right now the minimum value is at 80. I'm gonna drop that to, I don't know, 25, 30, somewhere in there. So now if I go fast with a quick stroke or I go fast and slow and then release it, you can see it has some. All right, so to make the outline portion of it is you go to brush shape two right here. It allows you to put another brush in there. Right now we're at 70 for the brush size. That's important coming up, brush shape. Right now, these number twos, they don't activate until you hit dual brush. Right now, it's on multiply, but what we want is subtract, and that'll do exactly what you think. See, it subtracts this brush, second brush, which is a size 30, from the inside of this brush, the main one, which is 70, which I think is good. So I'm going to link to main brush size. Now that's important because when you do that, as you increase the size of your brush, these sizes adjust as this adjusts. So it stays the same proportion inside the main brush. But let's see how it looks. Don't see anything yet. What's going on? Well, down in brush tip, the density, adjust brush density by gap. Turn that off. Okay, editing Chris here. I noticed that I had made the changes to the wrong pressure settings. So if your brush, if you're doing this along with me, if your brush looks like the one on the left, that is correct. Now the one on the right is because I had the wrong settings set, but I fixed the settings and then in the regular video, I then continue and everything should be good from there. Go to stroke, make it fixed, and lower it down to basically as far as it goes. It won't let you go to zero, but it goes down to 0.1. Now, what this does, what the gap is, is space between your, your basically the circle that is being drawn. When you have it all the way down to this, there is literally no gap between the lines that you draw when you're drawing. But if you did this, it would be dots, which is kind of cool if you want to make something like that. And then we need to do the same thing for the second brush. So why do we have this on the end? Well, because this middle brush, see how it's very narrow, then this brush that is being set in the center does not have the same set pressure settings as the main brush. So it kind of goes outside of it, creating that this, which is what we don't want. So in order to fix that, we need to make the brush shape the same pressure set settings as the main brush, which is right here. Brush size, click on that. I believe I had it pulled like that, and I think it was around 25. Perfect, that's what I'm looking for right there. So no matter how hard you push, even if you just do a quick, fast 
stroke, you still have it closed, so it's a full outline. Now the one drawback to using this marker pen like this is when you draw a line and you don't release, it crosses over and it creates one, see, one object, I guess you could say. But if you draw another line, it now crosses over. I have found a way to draw a line and then add to it so it always looks like this part right here. It's not a brush, it's a layer setting. Let me show you how that works. And we go to layer properties. And again, if you're not sure where to find that, if it's not up here, just go to window and layer properties. It's checked, so it's open. Let's drop down here for effects. You've got border effect. So with border effect selected, you get this right here. Thickness edge, one. Edge color, white. And right now I'm using black. So when you draw, you don't see anything if you have white paper. If you turn off your background and zoom in really close, you'll see you've got a basically like a one point outline. But if you switch this to black and take with your brush white, now you've got this. And when you pick up and draw another line, it connects. That's because it is a layer effect, not a brush. The catalyst for making this was I made a video a while back called How to Get Consistent Lines, where I would place a ruler and then draw, or I would just do a straight line, and then I would do a smaller line and go down the center and erase it so the lines are nice and consistent. And I thought, there's got to be an easier way to do that. And then that is where this marker custom brush came from. Take some time and look through what the second brush options are. These are really cool. Just play with all of these, adjust them, see what they do. Uh, what's really neat is everything you pick will tell you what it does down in here, which is also helpful. People ask how I, you know, how do I, that's how I do it. I just read this and I play with it and it comes up or I have an idea of how I want the brush to look and I see if I can make it work. I make dozens of brushes. You can see from all of these, outline, crosshatch, metal crosshatch, flies, I got all sorts. I make one comic book I, I worked on for myself. I made 12 brushes. I used them for that one book and that was it. Yeah, so go ahead and make them. Have some fun and I will see you in another video.